Hello, uh, my name is Carolina Salas and I'm going to be talking to you about honeybee reproduction and anatomy and I'm going to focus more on the female side. So first I wanted to cover on some important concepts and definitions. So the first one is haploid equality. This is a term that explains the reproduction in bees, ants and wasps and this is that the males result from haploid eggs which are unfertilized and females result from diploid eggs which are fertilized. Then drones, those are the male individuals and honeybees. Endophallus, this is the male reproductive organ. This one comes out during copulation. And spermatozoa, those are the mature reproductive cells from the drone. Okay, the queen bee, that's the one that controls the bees, lays the eggs and runs the whole colony and this one was fed a uh, royal jelly. Uh, spermatheca, this is one of the most important parts. Uh, this one is the one that is able to store semen when the bee gets out of the colony to go and reproduce. It will reproduce with about 10 to 17 drones and this organ uh, lets it store semen when it lays the eggs. That way you can choose which eggs fertilize and which ones not. And then the worker bee, uh, this one has the same genetics as the queen, but this one was fed uh, less royal jelly and was fed more broad food. Okay, so here you can see the anatomical differences more in size. You can see this is the worker, which was um, fed more broad food, and this one is the queen, which was fed more royal jelly, and this is the drone. Okay. So this was an image provided by Dr. Ellis in his, in his lesson. So here you can see uh, the anatomy of a normal worker, a laying worker, and a virgin queen. So they, all of them have paired ovaries, and this is a laying worker. She can lay eggs, but all of those will be unfertilized, which will result into drones. And this one is the queen and this one is the spermatica that we talked before and this is the one that will store the semen that will allow the bee to select which eggs fertilize and which not so i want to pose a question for you to think about what factor determines which larva will become a queen and which one will become a worker so the answer to that question is uh, the feeding as you can see in this diagram you have fertilized egg, light feeding, you get the worker, heavy feeding plus royal jelly, you get the queen, and this the unfertilized egg and you get the drone. So this diagram explains a little more about the haploid diploidy. And this one is a diploid female bee, goes through meiosis, have the eggs, the male bee goes through meiosis, you have the sperm. There's fertilization and you create a diploid female bee. And whereas um, if the diploid female bee lays eggs and the bee chooses not to fertilize it, there's no fertilization and results into a haploid male. Okay, so one of the questions I had was what happens if the queen dies? So it's important to remember there is this queen mandibular pheromone and this lets know the workers that the queen is present and that they need to be, no action needs to be taken. What I rem uh, Dr. Ellis said in his lesson that after about four hours, if they, let's say the queen dies, after about four hours, the workers will note a uh, decrease in this queen mandibular pheromone and they know they have to come up with another plan. So what they will do is feed of one of the larvae they will feed the royal jelly to create a new queen so that they can keep from producing females. Because if the workers start laying bees, you're just gonna get drones. Okay, here are my sources. I hope this was helpful because this was a, one of the topics that I had trouble with and good luck with your class.